September 21st Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Isaiah chapter 62 and 63 from the Old Testament For the sake of Zion I will not be silent. For the sake of Jerusalem I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines brightly and her deliverance burns like a torch. Nations will see your vindication and all kings your splendor. You will be called by a new name that the Lord himself will give you. You will be a majestic crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal turban in the hand of your God. You will no longer be called abandoned, and your land will no longer be called desolate. Indeed, you will be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married to him. As a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over a bride, so your God will rejoice over you. I post watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They should keep praying all day and all night. You who pray to the Lord, don't be silent. Don't allow him to rest until he reestablishes Jerusalem, until he makes Jerusalem the pride of the earth. The Lord swears an oath by his right hand, by his strong arm. I will never again give your grain to your enemies as food, and foreigners will not drink your wine, which you worked hard to produce. But those who harvest the grain will eat it, and will praise the Lord. Those who pick the grapes will drink the wine in the courts of my holy sanctuary. Come through, come through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build it, build the roadway, remove the stones, lift a signal flag for the nations. Look, the Lord announces to the entire earth, Say to daughter Zion, Look, your deliverer comes. Look, his reward is with him, and his reward goes before him. They will be called the holy people, the ones protected by the Lord. You will be called sought after, city not abandoned. Who is this who comes from Edom, dressed in bright red, coming from Basra? Who is this one wearing royal attire, who marches confidently because of his great strength? It is I, the one who announces vindication, and who is able to deliver. Why are your clothes red? Why do you look like someone who has stomped on grapes in a vat? I have stomped grapes in the winepress all by myself. No one from the nations joined me. I stomped on them in my anger. I trampled them down in my rage. Their juice splashed on my garments and stained all my clothes. For I looked forward to the day of vengeance, and then payback time arrived. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was shocked because there was no one offering support. So my right arm accomplished deliverance. My raging anger drove me on. I trampled nations in my anger. I made them drunk in my rage. I splashed their blood on the ground. I will tell of the faithful acts of the Lord. Of the Lord's praiseworthy deeds, I will tell about all the Lord did for us, the many good things he did for the family of Israel, because of his compassion and great faithfulness. He said, Certainly they will be my people, children who are not disloyal. He became their deliverer. Through all that they suffered, he suffered too. The messenger sent from his very presence delivered them. In his love and mercy he protected them. He lifted them up and carried them throughout ancient times. But they rebelled and offended his Holy Spirit, so he turned into an enemy and fought against them. His people remembered the ancient times. Where is the one who brought them up out of the sea, along with the shepherd of his flock? Where is the one who placed his Holy Spirit among them? The one who made his majestic power available to Moses, who divided the water before them, gaining for himself a lasting reputation. Who led them through the deep water? Like a horse running on flat land, they did not stumble. Like an animal that goes down into a valley to graze, so the Spirit of the Lord granted them rest. In this way you guided your people, gaining for yourself an honored reputation. Look down from heaven and take notice. From your holy, majestic palace, where are your zeal and power? Do not hold back your tender compassion. For you are our Father, though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not recognize us. You, Lord, are our Father. You have been called our protector from ancient times. Why, Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and make our minds stubborn so that we do not obey you? 
Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. For a short time your special nation possessed a land, but then our adversaries knocked down your holy sanctuary. We existed from ancient times, but you did not rule over them. They were not your subjects. God, we have a hard time understanding a love that's so deep and so pure as yours. When they cry out and ask, Lord, why do you make us stray from your ways and make our minds stubborn so that we do not obey you? Ironically, we're so selfish that we actually think specifically that that's what's happening. But you love us so much that sometimes you're willing to give us what we've been asking for. Um, to show us how much we don't really want that. Um, it's part of your discipline. And we know and see that type of discipline in many parents here on earth in relationships where um, somebody loves us enough to tell us the truth, to uh, help teach us uh, so that we eventually become a better person. And in this case, uh, you do this so that we can become a better person in you so that our lives can turn around and glorify you that if we're continually seeking and pursuing um, things that are of this world uh, sometimes you're just going to give those to us and say fine uh, if you want those things so badly you can have them and if you want those things so badly let them take care of you and let them try and love you and we sometimes soon sometimes it takes us a while we we learn that there is no one like you that there is no protector like you that there is no father like you that there is no one who loves us um, the way that you do and I, I say that with hesitation because we don't even understand the depth of how much you truly love us that that you would be willing to do that for somebody you love I, I don't know if I could I don't know if I had a a friend a best friend that I loved if she constantly sought, say, drugs or alcohol, I don't know if there would be a point where I just threw up my hands and said, fine, go pursue those. At some point, you'll hit rock bottom and you'll come back. I do trust you, God, with those situations, but I don't know if I could love somebody enough to completely give them up to the things of the world. I don't know. I, I haven't been in that situation. I'm not a parent. Um, and I'm not married, so I'm not, I'm not really sure what I would do. But to me, it's just astounding that you love us to that depth, to a depth that we can't even understand. Um, and you are so sure and clear and consistent about your love that you know very clearly that you will always be there with us, even when we are in the deepest pits of self-destruction that we can possibly find. God, thank you for our love. A love that's so pure that we don't even understand it. For your discipline and loving us enough to do all of that for us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.